In this video we would like to um, discover how we can uh, work with an array following a line and changing the line in a parametric way. For example, that we can uh, adjust the line and then uh, immediately um, uh, also uh, adjust uh, this array following the line. So I have full control over this line and I just have to update my whole uh, program in this terms uh, Power3D and uh, these objects are following uh, are still following this line. We start with a simple shape uh, as our away object, for example, like these uh, um, egg, which I can adjust a little bit, and uh, also these um, egg we make uh, a little bit uh, smooth, uh, more smooth, and uh, then we attach the shell modifier to get a three-dimensional shapes or shape out of this. This is my uh, my egg. And uh, the next thing we do is we uh, we draw a line uh, that this egg can follow this line. For this we use this helix. And we can already see that there are a lot of parameters we can uh, adjust. This is my helix and uh, next to this there is my, uh, my 3D object. And the helix, for example, we make slightly uh, slightly bigger and uh, probably a little bit wider at the top. Okay, and I think this is a good starting point. Next I will open my plugin Power3D, right mouse click on this uh, little egg, create shape. I would like to have an away count of uh, 50 and it's already quite high. I don't want to keep the original object and go into uh, Power3D, call this Power Egg, and uh, the program is calculating. Here we go, and what I have to do is I first have to attach uh, the helix uh, curve to my object and the object should uh, transform uh, along the helix line, so I go into the menu uh, transform and I would like to use position and rotation, that's really important. So I just take my um, uh, transform uh, parameters and I can add with uh, um, with uh, opening my control library, drag and drop uh, a controller which is called uh, a curve controller with a double click. I open the menu and the only thing I have to do is I now have to pick the object, uh, means the helix, and uh, which I do right now, and have to go on update array and you can already see that um, that my objects are following and I can increase the amount of uh, um, X and I can obviously decrease it, uh, increase it a little bit. And uh, if we want to change more parameters, we can, for example, say that uh, there is the parameter of length and um, I go uh, to uh, length and uh, see what's happening. First I have to deselect my transform, that's always really important. And uh, with length I can uh, adjust the length and I can see uh, what, it's, what it's doing. It's just getting bigger and smaller. And so um, seeing this, I think I would like to use an interpolate controller to adjust this a little bit. So I um, double click this field and I say Enter like interpolate controller, double click. And here I can change the parameters with uh, choosing a different kind of um, array objects to uh, adjust it properly. So I first take the, the first, uh, first object, I go to um, uh, click here to exit at selected item, I choose um, another one here in the middle go to click uh, and add selected items and the small one here and go to click uh, and add uh, selected items. What's quite nice, uh, I can also choose it via this menu. If I go to uh, 222, you can see it's this one and if I go to 131, it's this one. So it's also uh, an easy way of choosing this. And with the, uh, with the big one, I will um, uh, increase it, I go into my um, modifier, uh, into my uh, control field uh, modify and I will make it bigger, quite big and I choose the middle one which I actually leave like it is and I will choose the small one and make it even 
smaller in terms of the length. And if I then go into update, the whole thing will change immediately the way we want it. And if I like the same settings also for my width, then I just have to connect it. Connect it like this and we see what's happening. It does the same now with the parameter of the width. Now it's really easy to change uh, the curve and just uh, go for a different kind of shape. If I go, for example, uh, into uh, the shape area and to text, I can just uh, choose uh, a topography. I just choose one which is a little bit roundish and I just, uh, for example, go for a letter like, um, I go um, already tried this for this H and uh, I just uh, draw this uh, edge and uh, what you can see is uh, it is a little bit round and this is good because otherwise it's difficult to get around the corners and obviously it's slightly it's much bigger than the original shape we just see what's happening we go to spline shape and instead of this helix we just choose the letter and we go to our uh, update all controllers and it takes a little bit and then we can see that the all end up at uh, at my age and the only thing I have to do is uh, it looks a little bit thin the whole story that I have to increase uh, the amount of um, uh, of uh, X so I go to select away node and I extend it for example to 300 and it's calculating a little bit and then you can already see that this looks much better it becomes a little bit thin, so what we have to do is we have to choose uh, um, the one which is uh, quite small and let's see which one this actually is. It's this one and um, here we just go for a bigger dimension, for example, like, um, like this again and go into uh, auto update. Again, we have to wait a little bit. This was definitely too uh, uh, too much. I changed it to uh, to seven in terms, in terms uh, instead of seventy seven. You can already see that it works quite well. And obviously, you can use all other functions like the shape functions and work with the thickness and whatever kind of spline you choose. You can let it run along this spline and obviously then also uh, change the spline. I will choose this uh, spline again. By the way, also quite uh, nice, you just go into uh, this transformer and go onto text, right mouse clicks, uh, and then you have chosen it. And instead of an H, I go to uh, O and go to update uh, array. Here we have a little bit of an issue because there are two uh, splines inside. Let's see what, uh, what my program does. Probably it will only follow one. Yes, it will only follow one. So you have to work on two, you have to need two arrays, so um, because there are two splines in one letter, if you take any other letter, like an L, then um, it will probably already work again quite well. I just adjusted a little bit, uh, deconnect my parameter width, because uh, they get the same uh, value, which is probably difficult to control right now. And um, I have a look at the first one and uh, the last one, and this definitely doesn't look good. So it's quite obvious that this needs uh, uh, the same, more or less the same width. And what I can do is I can choose the middle one. I continued uh, playing around a little bit with the settings and it's already a good uh, starting point. If you look at this properly, uh, it's still not really precise. There are some irregularities and it's really interesting where they come from. And this is definitely not uh, the parametric uh, operation. It's uh, the basic shape. This means um, the topography I choose uh, was not, uh, is not really clean in terms of um, uh, a proper spline line. What I did, I just redraw the whole thing. Uh, this is next uh, here next to this with a normal line in 3D Studio Max and if I then choose this one for my array we first see that it just jumps to the other side and we can see it looks completely different it looks completely nice smooth and with a really clear transition apart from the first and the last one and this is just related to um, 
um, to our shoes that this is the first and the last one and we just have to adjust it that they really are connected properly and that's it. So what we learned it's sometimes better to redraw the spline line and uh, to have a really clear shape uh, and don't trust so much uh, all the uh, topographies and all prefabricated shapes because it could be that they are not really uh, uh, clear that the vertex, point that's, uh, vertex points are uh, too many and things like this. Uh, we can see it here. This is the spline line of our um, topography at the beginning, uh, the, the spline line I choose and now we just choose uh, uh, the other spline line. We look at uh, this and there are just less vertex points and it's just a much better and clearer uh, shape and spline line like, uh, like the topography at the beginning.